Hello and welcome back to 5 Minute Chemistry. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about the periodic table, or at least how it was created. So periodic table is one of these things that you will find everywhere in popular culture. When you want to show that a character is interested in chemistry or just science in general, you would put like a poster of the periodic table on their wall or something. So let's talk about how it became what we know and love today. So first of all, during the uh, 19th century, there was a lot of work in chemistry to discover new elements. So they wanted to find all the elements that exist and they wanted to organize these elements based on their properties. So the easiest way to distinguish between these elements was the uh, relative atomic mass or relative atomic weight that it was called back at the time, because that was kind of a simple number, just uh, one single number that you could use to describe an element to it. And it seemed like each element has a different uh, relative atomic mass. So organizing them in increasing order was one of the simplest things to do, but it was not really easy to tell based on just the relative atomic mass whether any elements were missed that are yet to be discovered or were all the elements discovered already. And of course they uh, used hydrogen. It was the element with the smallest atomic mass as the reference for the relative atomic mass of the other elements. But the relative atomic mass in itself did not give enough information to be able to find out whether any elements were missed or not. So if we start with the lightest element and just increase the uh, relative atomic mass and check the valence of these uh, elements, what we will find that hydrogen has a valence of one and the next element was beryllium because back then they did not know about the noble gases, so helium was unknown. So after hydrogen, the second lightest atom was for the element beryllium, which also had a valence of one. Lithium had a valence of two, the next element was boron, which had a valence of three, and then the next carbon had four, and then after carbon, nitrogen actually only had a valence of three, and then for oxygen, which was the next element heavier than nitrogen, only had a valence of two. And if we move to the next element, it was fluorine, which has only a valence of one again, and then we go sodium one, magnesium two, aluminium three, silicon four, and then go down again, phosphorus three, uh, sulfur two, and then you could get chlorine for one, and then potassium for one again, so things like that. And so based on this, you can see that there is some kind of systematic change in the valence of uh, the elements, so how many other atoms, the atoms of this element want to bond with, and also there are some physical characteristics that are similar. So if we go and take a look at hydrogen and fluorine here, for example, both are gases. Beryllium and sodium both are relatively reactive metals, and then we also have, uh, I don't know, these are non-metals here, so they had similar physical and chemical characteristics in some kind of periodic uh, sense. So based on this, in 1864, Mayer made his table of elements. So Wertig in the top here, that just means valence in German. You can see some of the elements had different symbols in German than what we know and love. For example, fluorine here is uh, written as Fl and iodine is written as J. And what we can see here is that one place here, actually the place of the elements have been switched and the, the relative atomic mass was simply ignored just because iodine has the chemical similarity to fluorine, chlorine and bromine, while tellurium has the similarity to selenium, sulfur and oxygen. So based on this, the early chemists, they already figured out that the chemical properties are more important. So you can override the order a little bit. So there were no real big like uh, switches. So you never had to switch around two elements that would be very different in atomic mass. But elements that are seemingly next to each other based on the atomic mass, it seemed like there was a reason to switch them around. 
So next, Mendeleev, whose table was basically what became the periodic table that we all have today, a few years later, made his own table. He put a lot of uh, emphasis on the compounds that these elements can make, and uh, he also marked the empty spaces where he expected to find new elements for his periodic table. So all these lines are new elements. Based on the periodic change of the properties of elements, he actually predicted the properties of elements that haven't been discovered yet. So echo aluminium is the name he gave to the element that is below aluminium. And the properties you can see here are what he predicted for this echo aluminium to be. And when gallium was discovered, then you can check how good the predictions were. And for the element that would be under silicon and was not discovered back then, he named it echa silicon, and these are the predicted properties. And in science, we like to make predictions because once we have a theory, so here the theory is that the elements have their properties change periodically if we order them in the order of their atomic masses. And based on that, uh, Mendeleev could make predictions on the properties of these specific elements. And after these elements have been discovered, most of their properties were similar enough to Mendeleev's predictions. Okay, so this is for today's episode, and I will see you tomorrow.